Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at some vectors. Let's just get started with an example. I've got a particle moving in parametric motion, and I've got a position vector, which is how I can find the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate for any time t. And we want to find the velocity vector when t equals 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what a velocity vector is. A velocity vector is the derivative of your position vector. So I'm going to use this little bracket to represent a vector. And so it's going to be x prime of t, comma, y prime of t. Not too bad, pretty straightforward. We know that velocity is the derivative of position. So here we go. Velocity vector is going to equal my x equation is 2t cubed minus 5t squared. So my x prime is going to be 6t squared minus 10t. That's just the derivative of your x or your position vector for the x. What this is going to give you is the velocity but only in the x direction. Now y prime of t is going to equal 8t cubed plus 3t squared. And this is how you find the velocity in the vertical direction or up and down. So there's our velocity as a vector as a function of t. So v of 1, or the velocity when t equals 1, is just plug in 1 for these t's. Have a little bracket for our vector. 6 times 1 is 6, minus 10 times 1. So I've got 6 minus 10, and that's going to be negative 4. And then plug in 1 over here for these t's. That's going to be 8 plus 3, or 11. So anyway, that's that. It's not too bad. Now we're going to find the acceleration vector when t equals 1. So I'm going to write out what the acceleration vector is. So your acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector or the second derivative of the position vector. So I'm going to write this as x double prime of t comma y double prime of t. There is your acceleration vector. Let's make my bracket a little bit better there. So let's write this out as a function of t first. So I'm going to take the derivative of the velocity vector to get to acceleration. That's nothing new for us. And so that's going to be 12t minus 10. And then that's just for the, in the x direction. That's the acceleration in the horizontal direction. And in the vertical direction, that's going to be 24t squared plus 6t. So there's your acceleration vector as a function of t, and we want the acceleration vector at the time t equals 1. So we just plug 1 in for t, and that's going to be 12 times 1 is 12, minus 10 is 2, and then 24 plus 6 is 30. So we are accelerating 2 units per second per second in the x direction and then 30 units per second per second in the velocity direction. It just breaks it out into what's called components. So let's take a look at the magnitude or length of a vector. This is simply the Pythagorean theorem. If we have a position vector, we have gone some distance in the x direction and we've also gone some distance in the y direction. So we could write that as a vector x of t comma y of t. The magnitude is just the Pythagorean theorem on this. We want to find the length of this vector right here. So that is, because we have a right triangle, that's just going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be the square root of x of t squared plus y of t squared. There is the magnitude of your position vector. Now for your velocity vector, we have a velocity in the x direction and a velocity in the y direction. The velocity in the x direction we're going to call x prime of t. And in the vertical direction we're going to call that y prime of t. So the magnitude of this velocity vector or the length of this velocity vector is again just the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be the square root of x prime of t all squared plus y prime of t all squared. And this is also our speed formula. If you find the length of your velocity vector, that is what we're going to call the speed. So you may be asked to find the speed of an object, and this is your formula for that. It's just the length of your velocity vector. Now for your acceleration vector, we are accelerating in the x direction, so that has a component x double prime of t. And in the vertical component, we've got y double prime of t. And again, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. 
So our magnitude is going to be square root of x double prime of t, all squared, plus y double prime of t, all squared. So let's take a look at an example here. I've got a particle moving in parametric motion. My t's are greater than or equal to zero. And the position is given by this position, these, these parametric equations we could write as a vector if we wanted to. We want to find the magnitude of the velocity vector when t equals three. So what I want to do is I want to find my velocity vector. I want to find x prime of t and then y prime of t and then I'm going to plug in my three and I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem on that. So let's do that. So my velocity vector is x prime would be 2t plus 5 and y prime would be, the, of course, the derivative of natural log of something is u prime over u. So that's going to be 2t over t squared plus 4. So that's my velocity vector and I want the velocity vector when t is equal to 3. So let's go ahead and come up with that vector. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 5 is 11. And then 2 times 3 is 6 over 3 squared is 9 plus 4 is 13. So there's our velocity vector when t equals 3. So I've got a horizontal component of 11 and a vertical component of 6 over 13. So I'm just going to do the Pythagorean theorem on those numbers. So the magnitude of this velocity vector is going to equal the square root of 11 squared, which is 121, plus 6 thirteenths squared, which would be 36 over 169. And I'm not allowed to use a calculator, so I'm stopping right there. All right, so let's talk about um, arc length or total distance travel. And we already have a formula for this in parametrics. So I've got a particle moving in parametric motions. We're only looking from 0 to 2 pi for our t values. It says the particle interse intersects the x-axis twice. Write an expression that represents the distance traveled by the particle between the two x-intercepts. The x-axis intersecting the x-axis means that your y is equal to 0. All the values on the x-axis, your y is equal to zero. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find these two x-intercepts. So I'm going to set my y equation equal to zero. And so by adding two sine t and dividing by two, I need to find out when the sine of t is equal to one half. Well, between zero and two pi, that happens when t equals pi over six, and also when t equals five pi over six. Those are the two places from 0 to 2 pi where I have a sine of 1 half. So those are my t values, and we have this formula for our arc length, which requires x prime of t and y prime of t. So let's go ahead and get those as well. x prime of t is going to equal the derivative of our position, our x equation, and that's going to equal 4 sine t. The derivative of the square root of 3 is just 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's going to equal 4 sine of t. And our y prime equation is going to equal negative 2 cosine t. So our formula for our arc length, our total distance traveled, is the integral between our t values of pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of square root of x prime squared, I'll go ahead and square that, get 16 sine, sine squared of t, plus y prime squared. That's going to be 4 cosine squared of t. Notice what we're doing is we are integrating our speed. That If you integrate your speed, that's going to be total distance traveled. So let's take a look at another example. Oh, I left off a of dt there. Got to have that. All right, now we're going to answer questions about when a particle is at rest. A particle is at rest when its velocity is zero. Now, in parametrics, we can't have any movement at all. We can't be moving horizontally or moving vertically. We need these both to equal zero to be at rest. So with this example, at rest, I need my x prime of t to equal zero. And I also need, that would just guarantee no horizontal movement. I could be moving straight up and down, and I have no horizontal movement at all. So I need my x prime and my y prime to both equal zero. So let's get those. x prime of t is going to equal 6t squared minus 30t 
plus 36. And then y prime of t is going to equal 3t squared minus 6t. So we need these both to equal 0, so I better break out my factoring tool. So I'm going to have x prime of t to equal. I'm going to factor out a 6, which will leave me with t squared minus 5t plus 6. And going further, I'm going to factor that into t minus 3 and t minus 2. Setting those equal to 0 gives me t equals 3 and t equals 2. So there are two times when we have no horizontal movement. I just moved my hand from side to side just in case you didn't see it. Now for y prime of t, I'm going to set this equal to 0, so I'll factor out a 3t, which will leave me with t minus 2. And that happens when t equals 0 and t equals 2. So when t equals 0 and t equals 2, we have no vertical movement. Now what I need is a time when we have no horizontal movement and no vertical movement, so that happens when t equals 2. All right, last example is how do we find the position of something if we know its velocity vector? And of course, to get position from velocity, we are going to have to integrate. So I'm going to integrate 3t squared minus 4t, and this is going to give me my position vector. And then integrating, well, at least my horizontal position vector, and then if I integrate my y prime of t. That's going to give me my vertical position. So let's do that. We integrate this side, I get t cubed minus 2t squared, and don't forget the plus c, that's going to equal your position in the horizontal direction. Then integrating the other side, you're going to get 2t to the fourth plus 5t plus c, that's going to equal your vertical position. So what we need to do now is use our initial conditions. We know when t equals 0, x is equal to 7 and y is equal to negative 4. So when t equals 0, I'll have 0 minus 0 plus c is equal to 7, so my c equals 7. And then on the other side, I'm going to have 0 plus 0 plus c is equal to my y-coordinate, which is negative 4, so c equals negative 4. So I now can come up with a position vector. My position vector is going to be t cubed minus 2t squared plus 7. That's how I find my x-coordinate. And then 2t to the fourth plus 5t minus 4, that's how I find my position in the vertical direction. And so when t equals 1, my position vector is going to be 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 7 is 6, and then 2 plus 5 is 7, minus 4 is 3. I am at the position right 6 and up 3. So that's some pretty basic parametric equation stuff, and I will see you guys tomorrow.